All right, raise your hand if you've ever had to completely reinstall OBS because you've broken something. Maybe you've deleted a scene that you're working really hard on. You followed one of my tutorials and you installed maybe a bad plugin or you lost some of your settings, right? Come on, raise your hand. Yeah, you in the back with the nano leaves behind you. Yeah, put up your hand. I'm gonna show you guys something that will ensure that will never happen to you ever again, as well as a bunch of other advanced OBS tricks that you may not have heard about. Before we get started, quick announcement. As of last week, I am now a jobless hobo, so I need to make money. And that's why this video is sponsored by Nerd or Die. You guys already know about Nerd or Die. I talk about them in like pretty much all my YouTube videos. Well, they just released their newest stream package called Amused and it's one of their best ones yet. It comes with a whole bunch of modular elements that you can pick and choose from, like this animated webcam border that has alerts integrated into the webcam border or like this sleek and minimal donation goal for those of you that are stuck in the default Streamlabs donation goal. And they make everything super easy to set up using Nerd or Die's one-click installer. So if you want to check out this new stream package or really any of the designs that they have on Nerd or Die, check out the link in the description box down below and use code NUTTY for 15% off at checkout. All right, tip number one is the source toggler script. Source toggler basically allows you to set up OBS such that if you were to toggle a source that's within a group, it will automatically disable every other source that's within that group. And it sounds really weird, but let me explain. I like to set up multiple different camera angles for my stream just so that my viewers can feel like they're in the room with me, but not actually, because that would be super weird. So what I've done is I've set up four different camera sources and I've grouped them together in OBS. And notice that if I toggle on camera two, it automatically turns off camera one. And if I toggle on camera three, same thing automatically turns off camera two. So this group of sources is basically working like a radio button where only one source can be active at a time. And this is not the way that OBS works normally. Normally, if you turn on camera two, you'd have to manually turn off camera one. That's what Source Toggler does, and it doesn't just work with groups, it also works with scenes. So what you could do is you could create a totally separate scene, throw all your different camera angles in that scene, and then use that scene as a nested scene for all of your other scenes. And then you can just use your Stream Deck or Touch Portal to toggle on the camera that you want to show, and Source Toggler will take care of the whole disabling of all of the other sources for you without you having to do anything else. So if you wanna use Source Toggler, you're gonna to wanna to download the Source Toggler script. I'll leave it linked down below. Then in OBS, you just go into Tools, go into Scripts, and then add the Source Toggler script that you just downloaded. Then click on the plus button and then enter in the name of the group or the scene that you wanna enable Source Toggler for. Now, there's not gonna be a drop down box, so you're gonna have to manually type it out. We don't do everything for you, man, okay? Say McDonald's. And then if you want, you can also click the always show checkbox, which will just ensure that there's at least one source active at all times so you don't accidentally disable all of the sources within your groups. But that's pretty much it. You just click close and it should work right away. Next tip. Tip number two is gonna sound hella boring but trust me if you guys are fans of what i do in this channel you're gonna want to do this man i really hate saying fans no you guys don't even like me it is actually possible to create a portable obs install look hear me out we're gonna set up obs in a way where your entire obs install is located in a single folder. That means all your scenes, all your settings, all your plugins, everything located in one folder. Why does that matter? That means you can put your OBS install wherever you want. You can move it to a different hard drive, you can throw it onto a USB stick and then put it on another computer, or you can put it in your Dropbox or Google Drive folder and have all your scenes and settings sync up to the cloud so that you never lose them. You gotta reinstall Windows, no problem. Just download your OBS install. You get a virus on your computer, no problem. Just download OBS again. Your house explodes and you lose your entire PC. At that point, OBS is probably the last thing in your mind, but you can still recover your OBS. So, how do we do this? Number one, go to the OBS website 
and download OBS, but make sure to download the zip file not the exe version of obs and then unzip it to wherever you want on your computer that folder is going to be an entirely separate obs install however to make obs run in portable mode there's one extra step you need to create a blank text file that's named obs underscore portable underscore mode dot txt you don't actually have to put anything in the text file just make sure that you create the text file and put it at the root of your new obs folder now just open up OBS by going into the bin folder and clicking obs64.exe and OBS will open up as a completely brand new install. And if you did it correctly, if you look into your new OBS folder, you'll see a new folder that's called config. That folder contains all of your scenes and all of your settings for your brand new OBS install. All right, that's that's cool, Nutty, but uh I've already got OBS installed, so how do I make it portable? Look, I'm getting there, man. Or woman. First, you're going to want to go to where you have OBS installed, usually in the Program Files folder on your C drive, and you'll see an OBS-Studio folder. Take that folder, copy it to wherever you want to put OBS. This folder contains your current install of OBS, as well as all of your plugins, but it doesn't contain any of your existing settings or any of your scenes. So here's what we're gonna do. First, create that OBS portable mode text file like we did earlier, and also create a empty config folder in your existing OBS folder. Then navigate to the app data folder, roaming, and then inside you should see a folder that's labeled OBS-Studio. This is where your existing OBS settings reside, so you're gonna wanna copy this folder and then inside that config folder that you created earlier, paste the OBS Studio folder into that. And that's it. Now your OBS Studio folder is completely portable. You can put it on a USB stick, you can put it on Google Drive and have everything sync up to the cloud. Now, one of the cool things about this, by the way, is if you ever wanted to like test a plugin that you're not really sure about, you can always easily create a backup of your OBS install just by copying the OBS folder and creating a duplicate folder. Oh, and uh, last little secret about this, you can actually use this method to record two different scenes at the same time. So if you wanted to like record your gameplay and your camera separately at the same time, that's actually possible, but you're gonna have to save that for another video. If you guys want to make that video, let me know in the comments down below. Tip number three, you can actually record all of your audio onto separate audio tracks. For example, if you're doing some gameplay footage, you can actually record your gameplay audio, your music's audio, your microphone's audio, and then in post-production when you're editing your video, you can adjust the levels of all of those different audio tracks completely independently of each other. This is really awesome because if you're doing a recording, you don't have to worry about whether oh, was my gameplay too loud and drowning out my microphone? Or was my music too loud or was my microphone too quiet? Because you can just adjust the levels after you've recorded the video. And what's more is if you combine this with the voice meter video I did a while back, you can actually separate individual programs within Windows as well and have them recorded onto separate audio tracks. So if you want to enable multi-track audio, all you have to do is go into your settings, go into the output tab, and then underneath recording, you'll see six different audio tracks, which represent six different audio tracks. I'm not recording that part. You know what I meant. Just enable as many as you think you'll need. Just keep in mind that some different file formats don't support multi-track audio, but OBS will tell you that when you select your file format. Then click on edit and go into advanced audio properties. And here you'll see all of your different audio sources with six columns. And these columns basically tell you which audio tracks each of the audio sources goes to. From there, you can do a test recording. And then in your recording, if you just drag that into your video editor, if your video editor supports multi-track audio, you should see all of your different audio tracks that you selected earlier. Now, if you're a streamer streaming specifically to Twitch, there is one more thing that you might want to know. And that is if you go into the streaming tab, you'll see a Twitch VOD track. You can actually select a separate track that gets saved just for your Twitch VODs but not for your live stream. And what a lot of people use this for is they set up a second audio track that has all of their audio except for any copyrighted music. And so that way 
Your Twitch VODs don't have any copyrighted music in them that could put your channel at risk of getting a copyright strike. But just be warned, that doesn't mean you're allowed to use copyrighted music in your live streams because even though Twitch isn't checking today for live streams, they may check in the future. So don't be doing that, okay? So I'm pointing at you, Nano Leaves. Tip number four is source transitions. Now, as of creating this video, this actually isn't a feature in OBS, but it is gonna come out in the next release, which should be out in the next few weeks. Source transitions are something that I talked about in a video a while back, but at the time that I made that video, it was only available in an unofficial build of OBS. Well, now it's actually coming to the official release. If you're not familiar, source transitions allow you to have a different transition for when you're toggling on and off a source. So by default, when you toggle on and off your camera, for example, you just get this hard cut and it looks really bad on stream. Well, you can actually set up transitions for that. So when you toggle off a source, maybe you'll have like a fade out transition or a fade in transition, or you can set it up so that your camera swipes in and swipes out. Or if you're really advanced, you can set up stinger transitions for individual sources, which is really cool. This one is really easy to set up. If you just right click on a source, you'll see two options that say show transition and hide transition, which it's pretty obvious show transition is the transition that happens when you enable the source and then hide transition is when you toggle off that source just keep in mind that the transition that you set only applies for that scene so if you have the same source in multiple scenes you'll have to set a different show and hide transition for each scene that that source is in final tip and this one is so dumb but i bet you that 99 percent of you guys didn't even know that this was a thing I'm just gonna call this one canvas panning. It turns out you can actually zoom into your OBS preview and like pan around. So if you wanted to make some really fine adjustments to your overlay, you can just zoom in a bit so you can see everything much clearer, kind of like when you're working on something in Photoshop. I had no idea this was a thing and I've been using OBS for like seven years and I only found out like last year that you can do this. To do it, all you need to do is make sure your preview scaling is set to canvas instead of scale to windows. And then if you hold down on your space bar, you'll see a hand symbol. And from there, you can just zoom in and out using your scroll wheel and then pan around by clicking around. Totally mind blowing. I had no idea you could do this. Anyway, that's all the tips I have today. Guys, if you learned anything new about OBS, let me know in the comments down below, especially the canvas panning one. Like, I'm for real, I had no idea about this. How many times knew this? Like, for, tell me. Also, if you wanna talk to like a Brazilian other streamers out there, make sure to join the Discord, as well as catch my Twitch streams. I stream three nights a week and we're always talking about streaming and trying to build new things. It's great, okay? Just, just follow me, okay? Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed now because I got work tomorrow. <sighs>